Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's August the 25th, 2021. Welcome to What Now America. I'm Tim Apatel, your host. Today's title for the show is Fox News Promoted Cow Dewormer Versus Vaccine. You know, on Saturday, August 21st, just recently, the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, had to post on their Twitter account a message, a message to stop a home concocted COVID treatment, a poison, a cow and horse parasite dewormer product, a product that you buy at your local feed store. And this poison has been taken by many people in Alabama, in fact, 21 of them to be uh, specific, and also caused a 70% increase in calls to the Poison Control Center in Mississippi. So here's the message that the FDA had to post uh, to discourage this drug called ivermectin to be consumed by, by, by human beings. And the quote is the following, you are not a horse, you are not a cow. Seriously, y'all, stop it. Well, that was the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, right? Yeah, I, I mean, Jay, I like the kind of the, the folksy, homesy uh, approach because they're talking to uh, an audience in Alabama and Mississippi. So regardless of y'all, it's ridiculous that they have to post this in the first place. But how did this come to be? I'm going to read three quotes. How did this all how did this all start? Well, let's go to Fox and uh, their most popular show hosts, Tucker Carlson, Laurel Ingram and Sean Hannity. And I'm going to read three quotes because there's something called cause effect. Someone starts something and it makes an effect. And I can show direct cause causal relations between quotes these guys make and advice they're giving on the show and the consumption of a poison, ivermectin. Here's what Tucker Carlson said. Benefits of a drug called ivermectin, which can and is used around the world to treat and prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Laura Ingram, we know our FDA has failed us by not allowing hydrochloroquine or ivermectin, both of which are used around the world to reduce COVID hospitalizations and death. My favorite, Sean Hannity, ivermectin, as well as other proactive treatments and practices, which is already helping COVID-19 patients all across the country. And with that, I'm gonna to go to my guests. Today we have Jay Fidel and Winston Welch. Uh, good morning. Straight to you, uh, Jay. Uh, Jay, the FCC, the FDA, in fact, the FDA was originally created to stop quack medicine. That's kind of why they were put into place in the first, in the first time many, many, many decades ago to stop quack medicine and the poisoning of Americans. So the FCC and the FDA, uh, why aren't they stopping these show hosts from recommending basically what is a, a poison and is putting people in the hospital, at least two or three at least? Um, when is Fox going to be held accountable for their quack medicine recommendations? There's really two questions there. The first is, why aren't they stopping them? And, and I'm sure that there are statutes and regulations that would permit the uh, FDA to, uh, uh, you know, stop them, uh, write a letter at least. But we haven't heard about a letter, have we? We haven't heard that, uh, aside from that silly you all thing. I mean, imagine a government agency sending a note like that. What was their justification, you all? The justification was they were talking to people who understood the language better in that context. That's why they did that, but that's ridiculous. This is the United States, you know. Anyway, um, so they didn't do anything. They could have done something. They could have at least written a letter uh, and maybe taken them to court, but they didn't do that. So what you have is, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people being exposed to a falsehood about drugs. It's snake oil or worse um, because it has, you know, deleterious effects on people. And already we have people in the hospital over ivermectin. So uh, that's the one thing. And so it's uh, right now it's unanswerable. I mean, maybe uh, uh, Joe Biden doesn't have enough time to initiate or cause them to initiate action, but somebody sure should. Um, and the other thing, and, and it struck me when you raised this subject in the first place, Tim, if I, if I um, 
watch Fox News. And I take this advice and I take this misinformation as true. And I have ivermectin in whatever proportions they are suggesting, all deadly. And I get sick or I die. Don't, this is not really rhetorical. Don't I have a really good lawsuit against them? This is like the lies they were putting out on the voting machines not too long ago. Um, you know, they know it's a lie. They have no evidence. They could never, ever establish the, the truth of what you read there. Never. And, and yet, uh, they know also that their loyal base um, uh, believes it, uh, acts in reliance on their credibility, uh, and does it all to their damage and detriment. It's at least fraud, and possibly it's murder if someone dies relying on that advice. So there is no excuse whatsoever here. And you know we, we should be waiting on a lawyer representing somebody who got sick or died as a result of this uh, horse medicine. You know, the other, I suppose the defense would be, you should have known that something you know, built for parasites has no effect whatsoever on viruses. It's a completely different world, why? You stupid guy, why did you do that, even though we told you? I don't think that defense is going to work. I agree. You know, here's the hypocrisy of the whole thing, is that Fox, as a corporation, requires all their hosts to be vaccinated. And you don't see a proactive pushing of the vaccines, even though Laura Ingram, Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity have been vaccinated. It's kind of like Donald Trump. He's been vaccinated. Yet just recently, he was pushing that concept again about hydrochloroquine. Um, Incredible. You know, let me go, let I, me go to another a point on this, Tim, and, and that is uh, it's the, uh, uh, the Groundhog's Day, the movie and the phenomenon of waking up every morning and finding the same movie is playing. Um, this also uh, came up in The Marathon Man with Dustin Hoffman, where he thought he was out of the woods and you know they drove him right back to work on his teeth some more. Um, and, and what you have is a, a, a repetition of the same thing that happened last year with these phony medicines coming from Trump and people believe it and they try to take it and it, it, it injures them and doesn't help them in any way whatsoever. And I find it extraordinary that they, they although he has said he took the vaccine, although he has uh, suggested in very mild terms they take the uh, vaccine recently, um, uh, I, what amazes me is they still reject that, and they boo him for saying that. Uh, and he still, you know, talks about these snake oil medicines. Extraordinary. It's like, you know what it's like, Tim? Like they want to be lied to. These people are inviting the lie. The lie gives them comfort. It's part of their cult experience. They're not happy unless people are lying to them. Well, Laura Ingram actually set the stage months and months and months ago, basically trying to imply that the federal government is tamping down um, hydrochloroquine and tamping down ivermectin um, because they don't want, because it's a cheap solution. And, you know, the, the pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals have to make lots of money because, you know, they, they contribute to political action, action campaigns and political campaigns. And, you know, so we ought to make sure that the, the, the pharmaceutical companies make lots of money and they wouldn't want to have a cheap and ineffective uh, product like hydrochloroquine and ivermectin. So this, this cabal that this information has been suppressed by the government has led into this conspiracy that these kind of quack medicines, these poisons, um, were actually effective. And uh, this is ridiculous. This, oh, I, I got to stop because I'm going to tongue tie myself and get off my soapbox. I'm going to go right to, right to Winston on this one. Winston. Yes, sir. Good morning. Hey, you know, the um, FCC, in a unanimous decision, just announced a five million dollar fine for a group that was race baiting in some robocalls. A five million that's the most uh, fines that the FCC has ever imposed on anyone in history. And what also was rare, it was a unanimous decision to come up with this fine. Where's the FCC in stopping Fox News, in your opinion? It's, it's the same question I asked uh, Jay, but if FCC, are they starting to wake up? are starting to realize that what people say on, quote, a news station, unquote, um, is actually causing damage and harm to the American public? 
Well, I don't think you're going to see the FCC cracking down on Fox News anytime soon. Uh, you know why? What might be I, interesting I, I have to ask the question why, especially when they're they're pro they're promoting um, a cow and horse dewormer as an effective cure for COVID. Why? Why can't they well, do that? What, I think what they're promoting is a distrust in the government and that that someone's out to get you and and uh, and they're not saying take two pills in the morning and call me next week. What they're saying is the government's hiding this and big pharma's hiding this. So it's, it's, it, it, it goes into their narrative of we're the, we're the ones you can trust to bring you uh, the, 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 the truth here, the news. And um, in fact- well, but, but, but Winston, let me, let me add something that Tim said. <clears throat> these guys reported that everybody in the country was taking these medicines. That is simply not true. Well, and that, yes, is, that is intended to get them to take these medicines, you know, go along with the huge crowd that's taking these medicines. I mean, well, to me, that, have, that, is, a, that he, is a, they could never prove that. That's a lie. They couldn't prove it. But, but if he <laughs> says, if Tucker has a report that three people across the country um, it, it, it were prescribed this by their veterinarian uh, somehow who believes in all of this, and they're actually taking it, and he says there's people all over the country, and that's three people, that he had a report of somebody faxing into him taking ivermectin. And in fact, we have uh, absolute many stories across the nation of people stripping farm supply stores of ivermectin and dosing themselves. That's why the, the y'all thing, I don't know about that. I mean, I, that was obviously uh, a dig at people from the South, but do you think those same people that are taking ivermectin are going to believe the very people who the conspiracy is supposedly about? I don't think so. So this is, I mean, if you're taking this stuff and you're going to the farm supply store to buy your ivermectin, Fox isn't going to put themselves in a position where they're saying, take two pills and call me in the morning. If they do that, then they will be sued by someone who takes two pills in the morning and then, and then calls them. So they're not doing that. It's just part of this narrative believe us. I mean, even when the Donald got booed in Alabama, like you were saying, maybe people want to believe in the lie. I'm not sure that's it. But but the fact that he got booed to say, take the vaccine, my first thought was, I wonder if he is uh, bought a lot of stock in Pfizer or, or something <laughs> at this point. That's that's what well, the only thing that made sense to me, uh, because otherwise, why would he be um, contributing to Get asking folks to get vaccinated. That that one actually didn't make sense, um, and he, he was uh, seemed to be off um, off point there. So that's a, that's an aside there. But uh, as far as the FCC goes, I don't know. I mean, when we have people, when Fox really is doing such a disservice to the nation, um, you know, our laws are set up such that I don't think that they're required to tell the truth um, about anything. Uh, as, far, as far as I can understand from what's been going on these last few years. And the truth is, it depends on whose truth it is. Is it real truth? Is it an alternative truth? Is it just a, just Well, okay, let me, go, make a, let, me, let me go to that point. We have to it? make a distinction between what, what a, a lawyer does representing somebody who got sick with ivermectin uh, and the government does. And the, and the government has a harder time, you know, First Amendment considerations and all that. The other thing about the FCC, which you didn't mention, is the FCC is evenly balanced, right? Uh, four of them, and there's two Republicans and two Democrats. I'm, I'm not sure who the chair is. The chair has a lot of sway in that. Uh, and that was one of the things that Rachel Maddow uh, you know, went into yesterday when she reported on this. She said the amazing thing is not only the $5 million fine, uh, by the way, which is not final yet. They have to go through some process to make it final. Not quite final. Um, but um, it, it's that it's that, that they never agree on anything, and this is a politicized issue. Um, so the remarkable thing is they you know they agreed there were not only three votes there were four votes, um, and we we have to sit here really the the three of us and try to figure out why they did that why they crossed this line and, and became non political on this particular issue. As for a lawyer who represents somebody who took the horse medicine and got sick. If it's not true, and they knew it's not true, and they knew, and they knew, you know, yeah, 
and they knew this guy, this person, the client would rely on it. That's a good lawsuit. Yeah, I, I would. I would think so. I'd love to be an attorney and have that one. I'd actually use it as a class action, not just an individual lawsuit. Um, <clears throat> Winston, um, to stay on this topic, you know, Facebook and Twitter, they have, you know, they have prohibited people's accounts. Donald Trump has been one of them for stating untruths about COVID and the nature of the virus and, and, and its cures or treatments. Um, now, I know Facebook and Twitter are not the federal government, but if they can block them off, why can't the federal government take a, take a page out of that book and start getting tough? And, and maybe, maybe it is, Jay, that these four uh, people on the board for FCC uh, maybe they've all come to an understanding that uh, harm is being done by false information and uh, these news show hosts of uh, promoting poisons for human consumption. Well, so Jay, was... uh, I'm excuse me, Winston, um, your thoughts about Facebook and Twitter blocking people's accounts for the very same thing and the possibility of FCC um, getting stronger and more, more aggressive about false reporting. Well, Facebook and Twitter are not governmental entities, and we have, we have freedom of speech here, and Facebook has the freedom of speech in its own corporate structure to decide what it will and will not allow. I saw, um, what was it, for fans only, reverse themselves on not putting on uh, you know, X-rated content when they realize, oh, that's what everybody was going there for. So these are private companies that can decide who they want to have on their forums, and, and, and they have standards that they apply on it, it depends on what day of the week it is it seems really but i've noticed that anything with covid now comes with any any post that mentions the word covid has a uh disclaimer or a something on the bottom of it that says N before you share this this post notice that this is related to covid um the facts for covid can be found here and i think they're basically uh, you know pushing people over to the cdc website just so they have their bases covered. You can still share the information. It may be fake. It may be about exactly about ivermectin, but I think they're realizing that they have some um, culpability here if they go ahead and allow some of these things to, to move forward. The robocall thing is something different. That's something where they're going into people's homes with a call, and uh, it's something where you're not inviting it in on your, of your own accord. You are... Um, uh, it's it's coming to your home with a call about whatever information. So as opposed I, I to Fox don't, News, I don't agree with where that, people, you can well, hang I, up, and that may, you and hang you may up be the right, phone. Jay, but the Fox is where people go for their America's trusted news source, and so this is where they are actually going to find out the real information <laughs> and to find out what how they're being lied to today um, by the government, by Anthony Fauci, by. Uh, uh, who George Bush or, or Bill Clinton or Hillary or anybody else? Um, uh, so it, this is a, it's a different story, but I don't think we're going to see any action on the FCC uh, regulating Fox at all. Now, people may pull out as uh, subscribers, but I would think that pharmaceutical companies are actually major advertisers on Fox, and at the end of the day, it's on some level about getting eyes before your product. Um, and so I don't know, is, does Merck and, and, and Gilead and, and uh, Johnson & Johnson still advertise on Fox? It's, it's, it's an interesting question. And if it's not, um, it's Well, maybe, maybe they should the advertise that uh, ivermectin is a poison. I mean, Merck, Merck has come out and said, don't use this. Um, yes, they the have. Food you, drug know, administration. It's remarkable. you know, it's remarkable. If you watch uh, cable, you know, you get ads, right? And you get ads for all these miracle drugs, you know, hundreds of them all the time, every day for, you know, minutes and minutes and minutes of advertising. And they always give you the side effect, right? And they say this drug can cause this, that, and the other thing and can kill you. <laughs> but here's Fox reporting it as news and telling you now it's going to help you. <laughs> it's good point. <laughs> That's a good point. Very good point. I mean, for the record, the Food Drug Administration, by the way, thanks for that correction. It's not Federal Drug Administration. It's the Food Drug Administration. Um, the National Institute of Health and uh, WHO, um, they have all said, ivermectin, please don't take it. 
It's it's not going to help you and to possibly make you very sick or even kill you. Um, how did we get here, Jay? Uh, going to you about um, Winston's point. Donald Trump is in Alabama. He's saying, I took the vaccine. Take the vaccine. I mean, uh, and then he gets booed by his audience. How often have we seen Donald Trump booed in a red southern state about a statement he makes? What, were your, what's, what was your uh, impression of that moment? Well, Tim and Winston, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you they weren't really booing him. What they were saying, you know, this like um, dog whistle kind of thing. It's a message under the message where he's saying, I'm, I'm going to tell you this because they want me to, because the Biden administration is telling me, you know, to tell you this. So I'm telling you this. <clears throat> but in fact, I don't believe it. Um, in fact, I'm really not telling you this. And so what the booing is about, it's not booing Trump. Don't you agree? It's not booing Trump. It's booing those guys who forced him to say that. Um, it's actually agreeing with him on his previous advice to them. It's not, it's not I, that know, they have lost confidence. Yes, in that, that, that makes a lot more sense too, Jay, because if you look at his actual statement, he vacillates back and forth. He says, yeah, I think you should... Uh, you, you could get the vaccine, but I also understand about your freedoms and you, sh you should have the right to have the, the freedom and then the freedom and, and I got the vaccine. It worked for me. It might work for you. It might not. It, your freedom might work for you. It might not. I, you know, is this, this mixed word salad uh, that's so, you know, I mean, that's all, all we can expect at this point. Well, so but it's a dog I, whistle. The whole yes. thing's a dog whistle. Yes, it, well, it okay. was. Yeah, but this dog whistle, unfortunately, has been going on for a year and a half, and Donald Trump started it. I mean, this is why this country is up in deep kimchi, because we have so many vaccine deniers, and not because they're concerned about what the vaccine is all about because of the, the research of FDA or the, the rushed uh, emergency use of it, not because for religious reasons, not because of uh, medical reasons, but because of their rights and freedoms. <clears throat> Those folks, those folks that refuse to get a vaccine that is making things very, very uncomfortable and very, very um, uh, dangerous for all our hospitals across the country. Um, haven't they been listening to this dog whistle for a year and a half? And that's why we're at where we're at. Jay, I'm going to continue you. to listen to the dog whistle, Tim. <clears throat> They're committed to him. It's a cult. He's already established some kind of perverse relationship with these people. And they are going to continue to do it. Um, not, nothing that has happened has changed them, the, the core, the, the base of it. And nothing that he says now will change it. Um, it's very strange. And, it, you know, it's a, we, we need to study social psychology more than we have to find out why people um, go along with something he said a year ago and you can't pry them off that. But that's what's happening. What's the solution, Jay? We have people with strokes, heart attacks all sorts of procedures that need to be done, but now they can't because of hospital um, capacity has reached its maximum levels. What do we to, do? I mean, what, what's the solution? You have to come down on them. You have to require the vaccine for everything. You have to require the mask for everything. And, you know, one jurisdiction after another is doing that sort of thing. Although the you know, truth is, um, it's un unbelievable that we have hundreds of protesters in front of Josh Green, the lieutenant governor's house, his personal condo um, here in Honolulu, um, day after day, uh, protesting that he wants to make a, a vaccine mandate. But I think the answer is a vaccine mandate. Enough with this. This is not so. Um, make the mandate. Make the mandate on masks. Let's get through this with a mandate. And if somebody wants to, um, you know, uh, uh, blow off the mandate, mm, let's take action against that person. Let's arrest that person. Let's find that person. Big bucks. After a while, they'll stop. Okay. Well, you, you got to think, Jay, you, there's, there's places out on our, on our fair aisle where the vaccination rate is hovering in the 30%. Um, even today, even today, with all the information that people have, obviously, they're getting different information than, than we are. And, and when, you have, when you have a majority of people not vaccinated, believing in an alternative reality, that idea of saying, and I, 
but I agree with you, of course, that, that, that we need to say, you know, if you want to work here, if you want to shop here, if you want to enter these stores, I, I saw that Oregon now has even instituted a uh, mask when you're outside and can't reasonably maneuver around people, say, on a trail. Um, that, that that's okay. But if you're out in the, you know, an open air shopping mall and, and even here in Hawaii, we have, I, I was at, 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 at one of our open air shopping malls and it was mostly mask free. And I would say the majority of them were tourists. I think the locals were by and large wearing masks, but if we're to understand what our current outbreak here in Hawaii is, which is dire. And I, I don't know if you, you saw the press conference with Mayor Valangiardi, but he looked like he'd seen a ghost. And I think what happened was probably the state health director and the CDC and whoever else they have out here came to him and said, Mayor, we know you don't want to shut down things. We understand that. But we are at 100% capacity right now. So if someone that you love has a stroke, heart attack, car accident, breaks their arm, they're not getting into the hospital. It doesn't matter which hospital you choose. There's no room at the inn. And we're looking at numbers now from this latest modeling that says it's going to be five times worse here in a month or a few weeks. And so you need to immediately have activities being, uh, you know, ceasing. So it's 10 people uh, at an indoor venue and 25 at an outdoor venue. And, uh, you know, wh when you're really looking at it, these are there's some some fear factor here that's real and whether or not people are getting vaccinated or masked there's certain things that they can do which is crowd capacity controls inside of, of yep. shops and so that's what they're doing they're doing what they can but when you're dealing with the population uh, i would make it mandatory we've had enough of this <laughs> insanity i would make it mandatory and i put the police on the street to enforce it and then I would arrest them and fingerprint them and, and fine them for thousands of dollars. And after a while, this will stop. Any other way, it's not stopping. You know, in well, my world, you guys, in yeah. my world. Okay, okay. People, last question, you guys are running out of time. Week, two people in my world who had vaccines have caught COVID. Two people yeah. in the last yeah. two or three days. Yeah. Um, some of whom you may know. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really out of control. It is. Um, last question, you guys, because um, we're running out of time. This week, the FDA has approved formally through their approval process the use of Pfizer vaccine. Does that shift numbers as far as increase of vaccinations on this island and this state? Question mark. Or in the country? Yes. Yes, it does, because the military mandated it the same day. So automatically you have whatever a population percentage here in the military that wasn't okay. vaccinated and it was quite high. What about non-military? What about um, the folks in Mississippi and Alabama that are taking well, I'll, take, I'll take Winston's point on that. There are two streams of information going on. There's this stream of information from the CDC and the government um, telling them the vaccine is to save your life and you, and you should take it. And then there's this other underfoot stream of information coming from who knows where. I mean, I don't know if we really know. Um, but there is a competing stream of information telling him to, you know, blow off the vaccine. This is very true. Well, Jay, I this just is... read three people on the show. It's called Laura Ingram, Tucker Carlson, and Sean Hannity. Got it. Well, so, I mean, who, who, who else has a vested interest in making sure that this country's in chaos and disarray? That's all you have to look around and, and, and as well. This could be foreign agents just as much as anything so that there's no unified front. We never had this before in this nation uh, until, you know, a few years ago when it's just, it, it's come out everywhere on every topic. If alien landed, aliens landed today and started eating people, you'd probably have some people point to the other side and said, oh, they, they made an agreement with them. They, they're, they're only eating the people that, you know, got Pfizer or didn't get Pfizer or God knows what. Uh, and that's, I, I'm trying to think like what would bring <laughs> people together today on, uh, uh, as back to humans. And, but, but you know what, here's your hopeful thought that I want to leave you with is that if you are walking down the street and you happen to trip and fall down and, and, and there's people around you that are normal people, they're going to say, oh my goodness, let me help that, that, that poor little old man or that poor little old lady, or even if you're a young lady or young man, they're going to say, are you okay? They're not going to ask you, did you, uh, do you watch Fox News or did you get your shot or did you vote for Donald Trump or Joe? They're not going to say that. They're going to say, let me help you up. And 
at the core of our being, we need to go back to that place of our common humanity and what's good and, and really think about our impact on other people's lives. Like you said, Jay, even people that are getting vaccinated, we know a quarter of them from the Los Angeles study are coming down with COVID. So even though they're doing the right things and we don't know what kinds of new viruses are incubating inside of people as well. So we need to absolutely get out the message that this is a moral, civic, personal, and, and interpersonal thing. This is, this is your parents. This is your, your aunties and your uncles and, and the kid down the street that you're protecting. And we need to get back to that basic sense of common decency and humanity and stop with all the BS of um, my freedoms or my rights or, you know, uh, ivermectin or God knows what. We have, a, we have a good solution right now, a partial solution, which is get the vaccine. It's free. It's available everywhere. They'll come to your house. They'll even give you a lollipop or a gift certificate to Jamba Juice. I mean, it's not that hard. So we just have to appeal to common sense, common decency, common uh, morality and, and uh, ethical behavior that seems to have been like a mass amnesia. But I think it's okay, there. I, I want, I I want a there. last word on this. Hang on here. Hang on here. Okay. Before we go to you, Jay, on your last word. First off, Winston, thank you for your thoughtful uh, and sage comments. I, I got to tell you, uh, Winston, uh, these comments are right on, right on the, the numbers here. And given this political climate, I agree with you. To a certain extent, Democrats will be blamed for aliens eating earthlings. They will be blamed for it. And <laughs> if it's not Donald Trump blaming for it, it'll be somebody else. Maybe it's DeSantis or uh, DeSantis. Gov yes. Governor Abbott. Someone will be blaming Democrats for everything. So, Winston, thank you. Uh, Jay, your last, your last words. I just want to respond to something that Winston said, to much of what Winston said, you know. So it's nice that we, we know what we ought to do, but there are people in this country that, that have not been affected by our, um, you know, our, our wishes and dreams and expectations, our begging and pleading. Um, they haven't been affected and they're gonna continue to do it. And the only way in the human condition where you can stop that is you've gotta disrupt that. You've gotta disturb that. I'll go back to your original point. Um, if, if Fox News is lying, you gotta stop them from lying. You cannot call fire in a crowded movie theater. The First Amendment is not absolute. Somebody's got to stop them. It starts with the government and maybe, you know, individual lawsuits as well. Um, the other thing is you've got to make masks and, ma and um, vaccines mandate, and you've got to enforce the mandate. Uh, the Honolulu Police Department certainly has the time and energy to do this. It's priority number one. We cannot afford to have 2,700 cases a day which was the expectation you mentioned, Tim. Um, you know, it's gonna wreck our society. It's an emergency. We've gotta act in an emergent fashion. We can't beg and plead. We know that doesn't work. All right, we've run out of time. I'll tell you one thing, gentlemen. Um, one of the reasons I love doing this show is because we have great, great guests, great ideas and great comments that in this brief 28 minutes, um, just, far above none are just wonderful to hear. And I think you guys are doing a great service for all of us. So thank you very much for your thoughts, words, and time. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host for What Now America. Please join us next Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And until then, aloha. Thanks, Tim. Aloha. aloha.